The sun was setting over Pineview Harbour as the Clue Club arrived at the dock, their excitement palpable. Before them lay the Mystery Maiden, a grand cruise ship adorned with elegant banners and twinkling lights. The gang had been invited to a mystery-themed cruise featuring some of the biggest names in mystery novels. It was an event not to be missed, especially for a group with a penchant for solving mysteries. Dylan, carrying his duffel bag over his shoulder, couldn't help but joke. I hope this cruise has less mystery and more relaxing at sea. I could use a vacation from our vacations. Sophie, her eyes scanning the impressive ship, replied with a smile. Knowing our luck, I wouldn't count on it being all relaxation. The mystery maiden was a sight to behold. Its sleek white exterior gleamed in the fading sunlight and its decks were bustling with activity. Passengers, many dressed in elaborate costumes befitting the mystery theme, mingled and laughed, their excitement echoing across the harbour. As they boarded the ship, they were greeted by a crew member dressed as a famous detective from a classic novel, complete with a magnifying glass and a pipe. Welcome aboard the Mystery Maiden. I hope you're ready for a cruise filled with intrigue and suspense, he said in character. Chloe, looking around at the theme decorations and costume guests, remarked, This is like stepping into a mystery novel. I half expect to stumble upon a secret passage or a hidden clue. Max, carrying Buddy's travel bag, added, As long as Buddy gets his sea legs, I think we're in for a good time. The interior of the ship was just as impressive as the exterior. The main lobby was adorned with velvet drapes, antique furniture and bookshelves filled with mystery novels. A grand staircase led to the upper decks, where more adventures awaited. The Clue Club checked in at the reception, receiving their room keys and a schedule of events. The itinerary was packed with mystery-themed activities, including a masquerade ball, a whodunit dinner theatre and even a mock crime scene investigation. As they made their way to their rooms, the ship's horn sounded, signalling the start of their journey. The mystery maiden slowly pulled away from the dock, its course set for a voyage filled with mystery, adventure and perhaps a few surprises. The Clue Club, each carrying their luggage, split up to find their cabins on the Mystery Maiden. The ship's corridors were adorned with vintage posters of famous mystery novels, adding to the ambience of intrigue. Dylan, sharing a cabin with Max, couldn't resist commenting as they entered their room. I hope the biggest mystery here is figuring out how to fit all our stuff in this cabin, he joked, eyeing the cosy but somewhat cramped space. Meanwhile, Sophie and Chloe, opening the door to their cabin, were greeted by a tastefully decorated room with a porthole view of the endless sea. As they unpacked, Sophie's thoughts returned to the peculiar man in the yellow raincoat she had noticed earlier. Chloe, did you see that man watching us on the dock, the one in the yellow raincoat? There was something unsettling about him, Sophie said, a hint of concern in her voice. Chloe, hanging up her dress for the evening, nodded thoughtfully. Yeah, I noticed him too. He seemed out of place. But let's not let it spoil our evening. We have a dinner and party to look forward to. After settling into their cabins, the gang regrouped, now dressed in their finest attire for the evening's events. The ship's grand dining hall was a spectacle in itself, with tables elegantly set and a live band playing soft jazz in the background. The dinner was a lavish affair with gourmet dishes and an array of desserts that even managed to impress Dylan. The conversation around the table was lively, with each member of the Clue Club sharing their excitement and speculations about the cruise. As dinner concluded, the announcement for the masquerade ball was made. The guests, many already in masks and costumes, began to make their way to the ship's ballroom. The ballroom was a dazzling display of lights and decorations, with a large dance floor at the centre. Masks of all shapes and sizes dotted the crowd, adding an air of mystery and anonymity. The Clue Club mingled among the guests, each taking in the unique experience. The atmosphere was electric, with the thrill of the unknown hanging in the air. Little did they know, the night was about to take an unexpected turn, one that would plunge them into a new mystery aboard the Mystery Maiden. The ballroom of the Mystery Maiden was abuzz with excitement as the captain took the stage, his uniform crisp and authoritative. Ladies and gentlemen, 
he began, his voice commanding attention. Tonight, you will all be part of a thrilling mystery. The first to solve it will receive a grand prize. The guests, already intrigued by the theme of the cruise, listened intently, their imaginations ignited by the prospect of a live mystery game. But before the captain could continue, a blood-curdling scream pierced the air from the far end of the ballroom. Sophie, her detective instincts kicking in, turned towards the source of the scream. Through the crowd, she caught a fleeting glimpse of a man in a yellow raincoat darting out the doors. Her heart raced, the same man from the dock. The festive atmosphere turned to chaos as guests rushed towards the commotion. The captain, abandoning his speech, hurried to the scene. Lying on the ground was a man, motionless, a pool of blood forming around him. Dylan, standing beside Max, couldn't help but quip. Well, I guess the mystery just got a bit too real. His attempt at humour fell flat, overshadowed by the gravity of the situation. Sophie, kneeling beside the fallen man, checked for a pulse. He's still alive, but he needs medical attention now, she called out urgently. The captain barked orders into his walkie-talkie, calling for the ship's doctor and security. The once lively ballroom was now a scene of concern and confusion. Buddy, sensing the tension and fear in the air, whined and lay down on the floor, his body trembling slightly. As the ship's medical team rushed in, the guests were ushered out of the ballroom, their evening of entertainment turned into a real-life drama. The Clue Club, however, stayed behind, their curiosity and concern for the victim overriding their initial shock. This is no game. Sophie said, her voice steady but her eyes reflecting the seriousness of the situation. That man in the yellow raincoat, I think he's involved. Max, looking around the now empty ballroom, added, We need to find out who he is and why he did this. This mystery just became our top priority. The Clue Club, known for their knack for solving mysteries, now faced a real and dangerous challenge. As the ship sailed on through the night, they knew they had to act fast to uncover the truth behind the attack and the mysterious man in the yellow raincoat. The deck of the mystery maiden was shrouded in a thick, enveloping fog, the kind that seemed to swallow sound and sight whole. The Clue Club, determined to uncover the truth behind the mysterious man in the yellow raincoat, split up to cover more ground. Sophie and Chloe headed towards the bow of the ship, their flashlights cutting through the dense fog. The mist clung to their skin, damp and cold. Keep your eyes peeled, Sophie instructed, her voice barely audible over the sound of the waves crashing against the hull. Max ventured towards the stern, his senses heightened by the eerie atmosphere. The fog distorted shapes and shadows, making the familiar deck feel like a labyrinth of uncertainty. Meanwhile, Dylan and Buddy, a dynamic duo in their own right, moved along the starboard side of the ship. The fog seemed to play tricks on their eyes, but then, through the mist, Dylan spotted a figure in a yellow raincoat moving swiftly. There he is, Buddy! Dylan whispered excitedly, picking up his pace. Buddy, with his keen sense of smell, eagerly led the chase. The figure in the yellow raincoat weaved through the deck chairs and tables, his movements swift and purposeful. Dylan and Buddy followed, their footsteps muffled by the dense fog. Every time they thought they were closing in, the figure would slip away, almost like a ghost. They rounded a corner, only to find the figure had vanished into thin air. Dylan scanned the area, his flashlight beam darting back and forth. He's like a phantom, he muttered, frustration evident in his voice. Buddy sniffed around, his tail wagging less enthusiastically now. The trail had gone cold. Dylan leaned against the railing, catching his breath. We almost had him, Buddy. Almost. The fog seemed to thicken, enveloping the ship in an eerie silence. The mystery of the man in the yellow raincoat deepened, his identity and motives as obscured as the ship in the mist. Dylan and Buddy, realising they had lost their quarry, decided to regroup with the others. As they made their way back, Dylan couldn't help but feel a chill run down his spine. This was no ordinary mystery, it was a puzzle wrapped in an enigma, hidden in a fog. The night had been restless for the Clue Club, each member tossing and turning, their minds racing with the events of the evening. As dawn broke, the fog that had enveloped the ship lifted, revealing a calm sea and a clear sky. 
the tranquility of the morning stood in stark contrast to the previous night's chaos. Gathering in the dining hall for breakfast, the gang sat at a corner table, their expressions sombre. The aroma of coffee and freshly baked pastries filled the air, but the usual excitement of a new day was dampened by the weight of the tragedy. Sophie, sipping her coffee, broke the silence. We need to talk to old lady Carol. She was standing right next to the man in the yellow raincoat when it all happened. She might have seen something crucial. Just then, the captain's voice came over the speaker, his tone grave. Ladies and gentlemen, I regret to inform you that the man who was shot last night has passed away. We are doing everything in our power to find the person responsible. Please remain vigilant and report any suspicious activity. The announcement cast a further pall over the room. The Clue Club knew they had to act fast. Finishing their breakfast, they made their way to cabin 15B, where old Lady Carol was staying. The corridor leading to her cabin was quiet, the only sound the gentle hum of the ship's engines. Arriving at 15B, Sophie knocked softly on the door. A few moments later, the door creaked open, revealing a petite elderly woman with a kind face and sharp eyes. Yes, how can I help you, dears? she asked her voice gentle. Sophie introduced the group and explained their reason for visiting. We were hoping you could tell us about the man in the yellow raincoat you were seen with last night. Old Lady Carol's expression turned thoughtful. Ah, yes, the poor man. I didn't know him personally, but he seemed quite agitated, kept looking over his shoulder. I thought it was part of the evening's entertainment until, well, you know. Dylan, leaning against the doorframe, asked, did you notice anything unusual about him? Anything at all? The old lady pondered for a moment. Well, now that you mention it, he was fiddling with something in his pocket. Looked like a small old key, and he kept muttering to himself about a mistake and fixing things. The Clue Club exchanged glances. A key and mysterious mutterings. Another piece of the puzzle, but to what end? Thanking old lady Carol for her help, the gang stepped out of the cabin their minds racing with new information. The mystery was deepening and time was of the essence. They needed to find the man in the yellow raincoat and uncover the truth behind the tragic events aboard the Mystery Maiden. The main deck of the Mystery Maiden offered a panoramic view of the endless ocean, its waves gently rocking the ship. The Clue Club gathered near the railing, the sea breeze providing a welcome respite as they discussed their next move. Dylan, always ready to inject a bit of humour, chuckled. You know, with all the food buddies been hoarding in our cabin, we could probably start our own buffet. The group shared a brief laugh, but the seriousness of the situation quickly reclaimed their focus. Sophie, deep in thought, mused, a key and a mention of a mistake. What could it all mean? Where would a key be used on a ship like this? Max, his brow furrowed in concentration, suggested, what about the baggage compartment? It's one of the few places on the ship that would require a key for access. The idea seemed plausible, and the group agreed it was worth investigating. They approached the captain, explaining their theory and requesting access to the baggage compartment. The captain, still concerned about the safety of his passengers and the unresolved crime, agreed to accompany them. Descending to the lower deck, the atmosphere changed, the bright and airy feel of the upper decks gave way to a more utilitarian and enclosed space. The corridor leading to the baggage compartment was dimly lit, the sound of their footsteps echoing off the metal walls. The captain unlocked the heavy door to the compartment, the creak of its hinges adding to the growing tension. The room was vast, filled with rows of luggage, trunks and crates, each holding the belongings of the ship's passengers. Let's split up and look for anything unusual or any place this key might fit, Sophie instructed, her flashlight cutting through the darkness. The group dispersed, carefully examining the luggage and the room for any sign of the mysterious key or clues related to the man in the yellow raincoat. The air was thick with the smell of leather and fabric mixed with a faint hint of the sea. Dylan, rummaging through a pile of suitcases, joked to Buddy, Keep your eyes peeled, pal. Maybe you'll sniff out a snack while we're at it. Chloe, inspecting a set of old trunks, called out, Guys, over here, I found something. The group hurried over to where Chloe was standing. She was pointing to a small, old trunk, its lock slightly ajar. 
It looked out of place among the modern luggage, its surface worn and its metal fittings tarnished with age. This could be it, Max said, a note of excitement in his voice. Let's see what's inside. As they opened the trunk, a sense of anticipation hung in the air. They were about to uncover another piece of the puzzle, a clue that could bring them closer to solving the mystery aboard the Mystery Maiden. The discovery of the empty luggage was puzzling, but before the Clue Club could delve deeper into its significance, a blur of yellow caught their eyes. The man in the yellow raincoat dashed past them, his movements swift and desperate. Without hesitation, the gang sprang into action, giving chase through the labyrinthine corridors of the Mystery Maiden. The pursuit was like a scene from a slapstick comedy, with Dylan and Buddy leading the charge, followed closely by Sophie, Max and Chloe. Left, right, left again. This guy should try out for the track team. Dylan panted, trying to keep up with the elusive figure. The chase zigzagged through the ship, the man in the yellow raincoat always just a step ahead. They darted around corners, dashed through lounges and narrowly avoided colliding with unsuspecting passengers. Just as they thought they were gaining ground, the man took a sharp turn into an open room. The clue club skidded to a halt at the doorway, their hearts racing. Inside the room, a shocking scene unfolded. Lying in the corner was a woman, motionless, her eyes staring blankly at the ceiling. The captain, who had joined the pursuit, rushed to her side. It's Miss Winthrop, he gasped, his voice filled with disbelief. She was one of our wealthiest passengers. She had a significant business deal planned during this cruise. The room fell silent, the gravity of the situation sinking in. Then, suddenly... A loud, anguished yell echoed through the ship. It was a mistake. I didn't mean to do it. The voice seemed to come from everywhere, its tone filled with regret and despair. The clue club and the captain exchanged looks of shock and confusion. The mystery had taken a dark turn and the stakes were higher than ever. Sophie, her detective instincts in overdrive, said, We need to find that man. He's the key to all of this. The group quickly left the room, their minds racing with questions. Who was the man in the yellow raincoat? What was his connection to Miss Winthrop? And what was the mistake he claimed to have made? As they resumed their search, the Clue Club knew they were in the midst of one of their most challenging mysteries yet. The Mystery Maiden was no longer just a cruise ship. It was the setting of a real-life whodunit, and they were determined to uncover the truth. The Mystery Maiden had transformed from a vessel of leisure to a ship shrouded in mystery and tragedy. The doctor's report on Miss Winthrop's death added another layer of complexity to the already intricate puzzle. Her death, caused by an accidental fall and a fatal blow to the head, deepened the enigma surrounding the man in the yellow raincoat. The captain, his face etched with concern, rallied the clue club and the ship's security team. We must find this man immediately. He may hold the answers to what's happening on this ship. The search began methodically, with the team splitting up to cover more ground. The corridors of the Mystery Maiden felt different now, each shadow and creaking sound adding to the growing tension. Sophie and Chloe methodically checked each cabin on the upper deck, their knocks met with a mix of curiosity and concern from the passengers. Max and the security team scoured the main areas, their eyes scanning every corner and face. Meanwhile, Dylan and Buddy ventured to the lower decks, a less frequented part of the ship. The dimly lit hallways were eerily quiet, the only sound the distant hum of the ship's engines. Dylan, trying to stay alert, joked to Buddy, If we find this guy, I'm nominating you for Detective Dog of the Year. As they turned a corner into a particularly dark hallway, Dylan bumped into a figure emerging from the shadows. Startled, he stumbled back, but Buddy sprang into action. With a bark, the loyal dog leaped forward, pinning the man to the ground. It was the man in the yellow raincoat, his face a mix of fear and resignation. Dylan, recovering from the initial shock, managed to hold the man down with Buddy's help. Gotcha, he exclaimed, a triumphant note in his voice. The rest of the team, alerted by Buddy's barking, quickly converged on the scene. The man in the yellow raincoat looked up at them, his eyes filled with a haunted, desperate look. The captain, arriving with the security team, took charge. Secure him and bring him to the interrogation room. We need to find out what he knows. As the man was escorted away, the clue club followed, 
their minds racing with questions. Who was this mysterious figure, and what was his role in the strange events aboard the Mystery Maiden? The answers, they hoped, were just moments away. In the dimly lit interrogation room aboard the Mystery Maiden, the man in the yellow raincoat sat handcuffed, his face etched with remorse and despair. The Clue Club, along with the captain and ship's security, gathered around, ready to unravel the mystery that had cast a shadow over their crews. Before anyone could pose a question, the man began to speak, his voice trembling. My name is Thomas. I was Miss Winthrop's butler and close friend for many years. I cared for her deeply, more than just as an employer. He paused, taking a deep breath before continuing. We had a disagreement in her room. She revealed that all her wealth, which I had helped manage and grow, was to be left to her sister's children. I was to receive nothing. It... it hurt me deeply. Thomas's eyes welled up with tears. In her anger, she turned too quickly, tripping over her own feet. Her head struck the pipe. There was so much blood. She didn't move. I panicked and fled the scene. Sophie, her expression a mix of empathy and sternness, asked, But what about the man who was stabbed at the party? Why did you attack him? Thomas hung his head low. He was her lawyer. The will hadn't been changed yet. In my desperation, I thought if he were gone, there might still be a chance for me. I never meant for any of this to happen. It all just spiralled out of control. Dylan, who had been listening intently, couldn't resist a quip despite the gravity of the situation. Sounds like you're more than just sorry. You're sorry you got caught. The room fell silent, the weight of Thomas's confession hanging in the air. The Clue Club had solved the mystery, but the resolution brought little comfort. Two lives had been lost, and a man's desperation had led to tragedy. The captain, breaking the silence, spoke up. We'll take it from here. Thomas will be handed over to the authorities at our next port. Thank you, Clue Club, for your help in solving this case. As the group left the interrogation room, the mood was sombre. They had come aboard the Mystery Maiden for a fun-filled adventure, only to find themselves in the midst of a real-life tragedy. Back in their cabins, the Clue Club reflected on the events. They had solved many mysteries, but this one would stay with them a reminder of the darker side of human nature and the consequences of desperation and greed. Back in the familiar surroundings of burgers and fries, the Clue Club gathered around their usual table, watching the rain cascade down the diner's windows. The cosy chatter of the diner and the smell of comfort food provided a welcome contrast to the recent events on the Mystery Maiden. Dylan, glancing outside at the pouring rain, quipped, Let's just hope we don't see any more raincoats any time soon. Buddy, lying at his feet, barked in agreement, as if sharing the sentiment. The cook, a friendly figure who had always taken a special interest in the Clue Club's adventures, emerged from the kitchen with a phone in hand. Sophie, you've got a call on the counterphone, he announced, a curious look on his face. Dylan, ever the joker, teased. Maybe it's a secret admirer from the cruise, eliciting laughter from the group. Sophie returned to the table a few minutes later, her expression a mix of excitement and disbelief. Well, gang, it looks like we're back in business, she announced. There's something strange happening down at the construction site on Old Farmer's Lane. Reports of a giant lizard tearing through the site. The group exchanged incredulous looks. A giant lizard? It sounded like something out of a science fiction movie, not their usually grounded mysteries. Oh boy, here we go again. Max sighed, half in exasperation, half in anticipation. Never a dull moment with us, is there? Chloe, her curiosity piqued, added, A giant lizard. That's something we haven't dealt with before. I'm in. Dylan, finishing his burger, grinned. Well, looks like it's time to swap raincoats for lizard hunting gear. Let's do this. With their spirits lifted by the prospect of a new adventure, the Clue Club finished their meal and prepared to head out. The mystery of the giant lizard awaited them, and they were ready to dive into another enigma, rain or shine. As they left burgers and freeze, the rain continued to pour, but inside each member of the Clue Club, the fire of adventure burned bright. Old Farmer's Lane and its mysterious lizard were calling, and they were more than ready to answer.